right, welcome everyone to our April meeting, making the most of LinkedIn. I know a topic that is something of interest to many, many people. So uh, happy that you could join us today. Uh, we are recording this and we will post this at the uh, Humans of IT community. So the same place as where the meeting invite is now, we'll be um, posting it there. And uh, in the chat window, if you haven't already, tell us who you are, what you do, and we welcome everyone. You don't have to be an IT pro or a woman. Uh, Twitter handle, LinkedIn, uh, any other social media that you'd like to uh, network with people on and general area where you are, because maybe you have somebody nearby who you'd like to get in touch with in real mode once we are out of whatever isolation we are in. And there are still user groups going on virtually. If you may be going to any of those, let us know. Uh, you might find someone of a similar interest and want to connect with them at one of those conferences. And uh, once we get back to physical events, I do have laptop stickers in my office, which I can't go to now, but uh, I can send those out eventually. So let me know, you know when, when things get back to more like normal. So I definitely encourage you to converse in the chat window that will not be captured as part of the recording. But uh, if you have questions, we may read those in so that they can be recorded as part of the, uh, the discussion. There may be some times when we'll ask you to come off mute because it'll be easier just to have a conversation. And then we also encourage you to commu uh, communicate with us at the tech community. If you go to Women IT Pros, that has our FAQ and also has a, a forum where we can converse. We also have a LinkedIn group. If any of you would like to join that, I can put the, the link to connect with us there. Other ways to connect, uh, Shauna Bang runs the fantastic Humans of IT community. And as part of that, she has a mentor app. Uh, it's on the Tribute app. And then part of that is this uh, community mentors space. You can also go there if you would like to find what we're calling a textable tribe. It's a way for you to connect with some people. Uh, you can use them as your accountability group to say, okay, I'm gonna do this. Or you can use them when you're having a bad day to say, uh, I just want to bang my head against the wall and people can chime in and share what's going on. So we really encourage you, if, if you don't have a group of people that you can just share with when you need to get something off your chest, I really encourage you to go there. Um, there's the link there, join community mentors, and I can also paste that into the chat window for you later. Um, my Women IT Pros challenge for you for this year is to make sure you have that textable tribe or people that you can relate to, do something that gives back to the community, for on your technical skills and something that gives back on your Women IT Pro community here. And just showing up for these is great. Telling people about these is great. So do it, tag it, uh, come hang out with us. And I will have a survey at the end. I'll post that link in the chat window. We definitely love to hear from you to hear if this is useful. And there's also a place where you can give us suggestions for future calls or ideas of things we may not have thought about. So with that, I am thrilled to welcome Laura to be our speaker today. She's going to talk about making the most of LinkedIn. And uh, just my little personal plug is uh, we've had this on the book for months now. And last month, my husband was one of the people affected by COVID. Um, he was a programmer on a, a platform that does travel, not happening so much. And Laura was the first person I thought of, went to Plum. He's getting connected with them and they're going to help him with his job search and just kind of figuring out, you know, how to, what he wants to do and how to package it. And so I, I'm just thrilled to have Laura here today talking about LinkedIn and how to make the most of it. So Laura, I will turn it over to you. Oh, wow, Kathy, that is, that's the best intro. I've never had anyone do an introduction where they're endorsing the product already. So, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That was so kind of you. Um, so first of all, welcome everyone who I haven't already welcomed. Thank you so much um, for being here. Um, I want to confess something right away, uh, and that is um, there's business on the top and party on the bottom. There is yoga pants on the bottom and just to make sure that you don't think I don't think this is an important event. I am where. Oh, we've got Kathy's got some. Uh, I have my llama socks, as I said, colorful socks. So um, you can uh, tell Kathy in the chat what if you've got that same thing going for you. I actually am in if you can see me or did see me at the beginning. I am in my office. I have an office in Seattle's uh, Fremont neighborhood 
And it's one of those offices where I'm, a, I'm the only one in that office. So I'm able to be here uh, physically uh, as much as I want. And I feel very, very lucky to have this situation where we can do uh, these virtual trainings. And we do a lot of virtual free trainings right now. So um, I'm going to go ahead and launch in and um, just a couple of things. Before we begin, I'm going to ask you a really big favor. We are giving away a ton of free job search content on Plum's Facebook page, but it's Plum was originally called Plum Job Search Strategies. So I couldn't change the name in Facebook without deleting our many, many uh, people who like us. So it's still our old school name, Plum Job Search Strategies on Facebook. Please like us and then you will get notification whenever we are giving away free content, which we're doing all the time. As a matter of fact, there is a new video that was just posted this week from one of my resume writers. And it's so good that I was really mad at her that she was better than at, at it than I was. And then we have our LinkedIn page, which is at Plum Coaching and HR Consulting. I do try and post as much as I can right now when we're giving away free content. But if you can follow us on those two places, that's great. You can also reach out to me, but I want to warn you, if you reach out and connect with me, when you send me the invitation, please write in the invitation who you are and why you're connecting. Because if you don't, I will not accept your invitation because I don't know who you are and it could be random. So anyway, there you go. That was my big favor right off the bat. And I will be sharing these slides with Kathy. I don't know if that's something we can share um, more extensively, but um, you'll just know that there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna cover today and um, it's gonna go pretty quickly. So we already talked about this, how to participate on Teams. Um, I cannot see you. I do not see your, your fuzzy slippers. You're muted. Kathy's gonna be our facilitator. Use chat to ask questions. And I don't even have chat up on my desktop, so I cannot see your questions. So Kathy is gonna interrupt me as needed or get to the end. I do have a question moment. Okay. I don't even have to tell you where the restrooms are because I am here in my office and you are sitting hopefully in a comfy chair at home. So why am I doing this? Uh, as Kathy alluded to earlier in that very nice um, pro, uh, statement, we have been, uh, I have been with Plum. I founded Plum in 2011 and here's the thing, I founded Plum after I was laid off from Microsoft with 3,500 of my closest friends in 2009 and from that came the start of Plum and I started, uh, I had been a recruiter for many years, I'm not even going to tell you how many, it'll make me feel really old, but I'd been a recruiter and what I did was I came up with the idea of reversing recruiting, reversing, reverse engineering it in service to job um, seekers. And that started Plum. And now this is just part of my team. We're standing in front of a giant box of candy, which was quite yummy. But here are all the things that we do. We do job search and career coaching and resumes and LinkedIn profiles. We also have a separate part of Plum that does HR consulting. And we also do outplacement services for companies like Vulcan and the Mariners and a bunch of other companies that you would have heard of. Um, a lot of these faces in this group are actually Microsoft alumni. You don't have to be a Microsoft alumni to or even a Microsoft person to even love working with Plum. We've probably worked with more people who haven't been Microsoft alumni, but I have to tell you over the years, over these many years, we've had probably hundreds of Microsoft alumni that we work with. And we work with people. We have one coach. All she does is work with recent college grads and new and career. And then I work with mostly C-suite and that we have everyone in between. So this is my part of my fabulous team. Okay, I am LinkedIn's number one fan. And by the way, I do not make a cent on LinkedIn. It isn't like I'm being paid to do any of this. I really love LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn because as a recruiter, I was able to find anybody. I was able to find uh, who you were, I might have even recruited you back in the day, and um, even now for job search, you can find decision makers on LinkedIn. And it is one of the most fabulous tools 
that I can think of for your job search. I can go into uh, this. I can wax rhapsodic, rhapsodic about this for hours, so I will keep it short. I know that I'm talking to potentially some very um, numbers focused people. I know my um, I'm married to a numbers focused person, so I do include some numbers here. So let's do some numbers about LinkedIn. There are 575 million registered users, 260 million active users each month. 90% of recruiters use LinkedIn worldwide. And all this is from LinkedIn, has its entire group that all they do is work on these metrics. This recent study found that 122 million people received an interview just through LinkedIn alone. And so if you're not leveraging LinkedIn, um, you will after this workshop, hopefully. 35.5 million people were hired by a person they connected with via LinkedIn. Now, I want to go back here for a second, and I want to acknowledge something really uh, with a lot of candor. Um, we know that there's a lot less hiring going on, and we know it's a really challenging time. I know it feels really sucky for a lot of you right now, and I acknowledge it and I honor it. But I want you to know your opportunity here is to take this time to optimize yourself as a candidate or as a future candidate. So this tool is really meant to do our best in terms of surmounting the challenges we have before us. There will be hiring in the future and you wanna be at the front of that line. So I just want you to know, I feel your pain, I get you. We've had clients back out of the work they're doing with us. So I know, I, I know. And remember, I was laid off, laid off in 2009. I totally get it. But let's talk about the positives and let's talk about LinkedIn and um, how LinkedIn is your superpower, man or woman, by the way. I used to have the superwoman logo and then I was giving this workshop to so many men as well. I felt like I need to be very embracing of everyone. It's also a validation tool. Have you ever had someone reach out to you and maybe over email and say, oh, I just wanted to talk treat you to a cup of coffee and you're like, who are you? Well, you're not going to go to Facebook to look up who they are. You're probably going to go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is your professional validation tool. I teach LinkedIn to corporations where they're trying to up their, um, their visibility to their consultants or even Windermere Real Estate. I did it for their real estate brokers. And they say that whenever that someone reaches out to them, they've always looked at their LinkedIn profile first. So it is a very important validation tool, not only in your search, but just as a professional person. Now, I'm going to show you some really awesome stuff. <laughs> I'm going to show you some stuff that is going to make you want to open a window, a separate window, and you're going to want to make changes to your edits. And I did this workshop about a month or two ago and um, had this slide a little further on. And then in the chat room, it exploded after I showed a bunch of stuff and people didn't realize they should have waited. So I've moved this slide up. Bear with me here. I'm going to show you a lot of content. I'm on a lot of great stuff, but please don't copy anything I'm doing to do to your LinkedIn profile right now. Because once I show you towards the end of this workshop, you're going to go, dang, Laura, why didn't you tell us to stop? And so I'm telling you right now, stop. And I'll let you know when it's yellow and I'll let you know when it's green. Okay, so let's talk about your profile. And some of you may already have a rock solid profile. And as I'm showing you, these things are like, yeah, yeah, I got this. I got this. But I'm hoping you get some nuggets out of this that really enhance your profile. So each profile receives about seven seconds of eyeball time. Seven seconds. And by the way, that's on average. So, you know, it's getting even less from some people. Profiles with a photo receive 21 times the number of views. And we're going to talk about photos as we get into this work, but I just want you, or into this workshop, but I want you to know that a photo is a critical part of what your profile should include. And the about section, which used to be called the summary, is read more than any other section, even more than your jobs, if you can believe that. So let me just let me just stop here for just a second and talk to you about something that drives me nuts about LinkedIn. And that is LinkedIn 
owned by Microsoft, LinkedIn can change its user interface anytime it wants. So I check LinkedIn before I do any workshop because I can't tell you how many times I'm coaching a client and I go, oh, and there's this summary. And then I look at it and it says about. And it's really frustrating. LinkedIn does not typically give you a heads up when those changes are made. And by the way, if you have worked on the LinkedIn team and you're a LinkedIn alum, I love you. You saw I love this product, but it is really frustrating when they make changes to the user interface. How are we doing, Kathy? Anything? Great. No, okay. no questions so far, but uh, if you have them, feel free to pop them in the chat window. Okay, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about what you need to do to make an outstanding profile. And by the way, I will show you some outstanding profiles. I wish I had copyrighted this term. I don't think I can, but I believe in eyeball glue. If you know that every profile gets about seven seconds and you want to keep someone looking at your profile, you need to have these things. It needs to be complete have the photo, a banner, which I'll talk about in a little while, a header, which is the most important point in my work. I mean, if if you leave here with anything today other than a, a deep passion for LinkedIn like I have, it is also that a header is one of the most important parts of your LinkedIn profile. The about section or your summary, these keywords, and I'll talk about keywords, it needs to be easy to read, and I'll show you some great profiles so that you understand what I'm talking about. It needs to have compelling content. Please do not take a job description that you have from 1998 and paste it into your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn, like your resume, has to not only align with the job you want and the thing that and the kinds of roles you're going for, it also absolutely must have stories of success. So you're going to have some homework after you do this workshop and I can't um, I can't grade your homework, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some assignments. You're going to do those assignments before you start playing with your LinkedIn profile, which is why I did not want you to play with your LinkedIn profile right now. And then I'll briefly talk about recommendations, which is a really common question. The other thing that is not on here that I will be covering is should you get a LinkedIn premium membership? It doesn't have anything to do with eyeball glue, but I will be covering that. Okay, so how do you create the ideal profile? Well, first, you start at the end. And whenever we have clients who call us about resumes, they always go, okay, I'm ready to work on my resume. And the very first thing we ask them is, give us three jobs that you are using as your North Star. Because a LinkedIn profile and a resume are never created in a vacuum. It isn't about just pushing out your message. It's about aligning your message to the job that you want. So what do hiring manager, managers typically want to see in someone they're hiring for a particular type of role that you would like to target? What keywords can you use from job descriptions that align with your experience? You want to tell those stories of success in almost every bullet and metrics, by the way, really, really exciting. And what specific expertise do you want to highlight? So let me give you an example. So I run a business. I've run a business for a long time and I have a P&L. And I hate looking at my p and I am not a numbers gal. I'm a people person. I hate that term. But I'm one of those people that I want to work with clients and I want to do this work and I want to support our clients. I do not like looking at a P&L. Well, let's say tomorrow I wanted to close Plum down and I wanted to do something else and not run a business. I would not highlight the thing that I do not want to do, which is numbers and metrics and all those kinds of things. So I am going to only articulate what I want to be doing, not what I don't want to be doing. And what is your market differentiator? If you are a developer or you're an IT person or you're a program manager, there's so many program managers or project managers out there. What is your market differentiator? What makes you different than everybody else? And the best way to find out is to first understand what people are looking for and then articulating your message in a way that makes you go to the top of the line, top of the list. Okay, so here is 
a really strong profile. And by the way, everyone that I'm showing you today has given me permission to show their profile in a workshop um, that I did for their safety and security. Take out their take out their last name or first name. So here's Doug, and I want to tell you a little short story about Doug. So this is a good time to have a sip of coffee or your soda, whatever. So Doug actually uh, moved here from the, I think it's the Houston area. His entire career, even though he'd gone to UW, his entire career had been outside of the Seattle area. And he and his wife moved here when his wife got an executive role um, regionally. And so he got here and his entire background was in the derivatives industry. You can, you can bing that. I don't want to explain what that is, but we had to make sure that Doug showed up as a resource to industries here in this region and that he lives here when his entire LinkedIn profile showed that he lives somewhere else. So first what you'll notice is that Doug has a banner at the top of his profile. It is a photo of Seattle to let recruiters and hiring managers know that that is where he lives. Now you don't have to have a picture of Burien or Bothell or Seattle, something that articulates and draws the eye, like some of my IT clients have kind of graphics that mimic the ones that women IT pros use. You know, just, you know, very uh, technical looking, um, but very engaging um, visual at the top of their page. And so that is the first thing that grabs attention. Then you have a photo. Now, Doug had a pretty, like, a uh, serious photo before, and Seattle is a pretty provincial city, and most uh, most organizations that do technology are also going to have a pretty relaxed environment. So we sort of loosened Doug up there for that photo. Um, so it's engaging. And then the most important part of this entire profile, and I don't know, I don't know if you can see my cursor when I'm yes, presenting. We can. This is. Again, if you leave here today learning one thing, senior sales management corporate, B2B, and major accounts with my favorite little icon right there. That, that's my favorite keystroke. Now, here's what you don't see the word derivatives and you don't see Houston, but LinkedIn defaults to your last job. So if we had defaulted, we would certainly have not attracted anyone regionally to Doug's background. Maybe, maybe like um, an investment firm or something like that. But he did senior sales management and he sold into corporate and it was all B2B. And he was responsible for the major accounts that were really, really high end. So that header, and this is a question I, want, I get a lot. How do you determine what that header is? Now, if you are a seasoned IT program or product manager, excuse me, or project manager, you can say senior IT project management. And then you use that little up and down, and then you use something else that you think is really important from the job shopping or the job descriptions that you found. And so what's really important in the kind of role that you want? What's, what's like top, and list sort of stuff. And for Doug in his job shopping, he found that senior sales management, corporate, B2B and major accounts. So you should be looking at that job shopping. Remember a couple of slides ago, I said you absolutely need to go look at the jobs that are out there first and start at the end. Well, this is what informs your LinkedIn profiles header as well as the rest of the content. Here is a perfect about section. What you'll notice is that it's there are numerals, names, and symbols in this about section. Numerals, names, symbols are the thing that attract the eye the most other than photos. So we try and put, oops, sorry, nope, I went a little bit too fast. We wanted to put, we always start with how many years experience because a numeral, I don't know what I'm doing. The numeral is the thing that draws the eye first. And then you'll notice there's lots of clean white space in between each statement. And then at the bottom, 
These are key words from his job description shopping. So these are all really clear and easy to read. And remember how I told you that this is the most read section, but most people do not even leverage it. Now, if you don't want to be found and you don't want people to know about you and you don't want to use keywords and you want to be under the you want to be under the radar, what are you doing in this workshop? But also you want to make sure you leverage your about section. I won't go over this whole thing, but one thing I do want to point out Again, this is a love-hate relationship with LinkedIn. LinkedIn technically doesn't have bullets. You have to create them in a Word doc or whatever tool of your choice and then cut and paste and put them into LinkedIn. Now, if you worked at LinkedIn or you were able to figure this out, how to put a bullet in, please do not email me. Please do not um, admonish me. Yes, there are like 16 keys that you can hit at the same time to create a bullet. But it is much easier just to go into Word and create your list and copy and paste. But here's, but that is really important for you to know because people will email me after this and go, well, how do I create a bullet? You can't in LinkedIn. It's a crazy UI, I think. Okay. Hey, Laura, um, we did have a question, but sure. I, I may want to give you the, the option of, of passing on this one. So Nia says, question, as a recruiter, could you walk through the process of how you look for people for the job you're trying to fill? Our May call is actually going, is called how to get noticed by recruiters. Oh so I don't God, really want to take any time. I do not. I do not want to take away from that presentation. You absolutely should go because okay. I, even though I was a recruiter for 20 plus years, it was a lot more than that, but I'm not going to tell you how many. Um, even though I was recruited for a long time and LinkedIn was my favorite product, I want you to, to, to go to every workshop you can go to, especially women in IT, women IT pros. So these, this answers the question right away. I'm sorry, who asked the question? Who was it? Uh, Niha. Niha. Niha, here it is. And I apologize if I'm butchering your, butchering your name with a name like Laura Pepping. Mine is butchered all the time. Okay, so this is the thing that is all sorts of sexy to a recruiter. I, there's something that, that eyeball glue, boom, I see a picture, ooh, a picture, ooh, I see a picture of Doug, ooh, I see the header. That tells me who Doug is right away. And then the about section, the section that I just showed you right here. And you know what, there's a lot of, there are a lot of lazy recruiters out there. I'm just going to tell you because we, um, I've been married for a long time and I've never used this app, but I guess there's an app where you can swipe left or right to look at people's profiles and people swipe really quickly. Recruiters do the same thing. We just swipe and swipe and swipe on LinkedIn. I want to be very clear on LinkedIn, not on dating apps. Okay, so yeah, this is the most important section to draw my attention as a recruiter. Okay, here's the about section. I just blew it up for you. It's very bad, um, pixelated kind of look here. But the other thing I just want to point out to you is what we do is we build in those symbols, the numerals. Notice I didn't write built TWO successful business ventures. I actually wrote T, I just put in the numeral because again, the numeral, it's what attracts the eye. And I try and always put a numeral in the middle because your eye will automatically go to that numeral and read around it. There's a method to this madness. Can you believe it? Here's another one, but this isn't the top section. This is the jobs section. So Brian, I'm not even going to talk about his photo or his header, but you can just look at it. You'll always be able to tell a LinkedIn workshop from Plum participant because they start doing this on the top of their profiles. And I just love that. Um, but what you'll notice is on Brian's, it says where he was, of course, how many years. Notice no months. Now, if you've been at Microsoft for a long time or at a company a long time, and you've heard the term lemming effect. Lemming effect is where you see something and you just do it because you think you're supposed to because everyone else is. Well, guess what? On LinkedIn, you do not need to choose a month. You can just leave it as a year. Just where it says the word choose, 
be stubborn and pigheaded and ignore it. And the reason that I tell you to do that is because we want to make this as easy on the eyes as we possibly can. And that means we want to take out the superfluous stuff. And recruiters don't care whether you started in April, May, June, or July, and when you ended April, May, June, and July, unless you started in April and ended in May in the same year. That would be a problem. But here is the ideal job section look. What you'll notice is there's the, all of his, well, in this case, you can't see them all, but the job title is in all caps. And again, you don't want to be a lemming, that bird that follows the other birds into the ocean. You want to actually ignore what LinkedIn is trying to tell you to do, which is lowercase. They make recommendations of job titles. You can type in all caps. And here's why that's so awesome is because if I'm a lazy recruiter and I do get through the about section and then I start looking at your jobs, I'm only looking at your job titles typically. And if they're in all caps, it makes it so much easier for me to read. I can go through it so much faster. So remember, it's all about eyeball glue. And then we've got a description of the job that he had. And then, oops, sorry. And then we've got bulleted stories of success. And they're each separated by a white space. Because when you see a bunch of content all mushed together, your eye goes, nah, never mind. If you see it like this, it's much more um, inviting to read much easier on the eye to read and again i do it we do it where we put as much of the numerals and symbols in the middle of the page to be read around so okay i'm i'm just keeping track of my time and i want to get through this any questions kathy uh nothing in the chat window so i take you going <laughs> Um, can you just take, can I do a pulse check here? Mm -hmm. can everyone just say, um, yes, you're going at the right pace or no, you're going too fast. Here, what I'll do is I, in the chat window, I'm going to put a, uh, a okay. right pace question mark. And if we're going at the right pace, then give it a, a thumbs up. Because I, I talk really, really fast and um, this workshop is typically uh three hours long <laughs> i've yep. condensed it so you can imagine i'm thinking my brain is saying oh my gosh this is three hours you got to make it an hour and my tongue is going like at a million miles an hour uh so far 12 on the right pace okay so okay so i'm just gonna keep it going yeah. okay so let me talk about your attractive URL. So if you go to your LinkedIn profile right now, if you go to LinkedIn and then you click on see my profile, you're gonna see a URL at the top of your page. And that URL is one of the places where you can take advantage of LinkedIn's feature where you can create your own URL. Now with a name like Laura Pepping, it's pretty easy to get my own attractive URL. Um, and it was easy to do. If your name is Jane Smith or Bob Smith, I am really sorry for you, but that's what middle names are for, or Seattle, or wherever you're living right now. But LinkedIn will make some recommendations of URLs as well. Now, why do you even care about a URL? Well, because we make all of our clients do a really sec really awesome, I'm just gonna say sexy, sorry, a really great URL because we put it on their resume. It's at the top of their resume and it's a live link. So we want to optimize people going, go, looking at every place where, you're, where your information is shared. So there you go. And uh, uh, we did have a question. Yeah. So yes. I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, how similar or different should the LinkedIn profile be to your resume? Mm. That is such a great question. So um, I can't show this on my screen unless I go live, but um, I say to people, it shouldn't be verbatim always because sometimes you had jobs in your past on your resume that don't relate to the job that you want in the future. 
So you may have been a horse trainer back in 99 or 2001. And that is something to show your, I don't know, you know, commitment to horses, but you absolutely do not need that on your LinkedIn profile. So your resume tends to have all of your jobs um, and LinkedIn should be really focused on the job that you want. And also, I've seen resumes, and a very common question for me is how many pages should a resume be, and I'll answer that in a minute, but um, your LinkedIn profile, because you're telling stories of success in each bullet, sometimes you're able to leverage that from your resume, because that's what we do with our clients, but sometimes you have too much content in some of the older jobs, and you don't really need to have anything more than the job title and not bullets underneath it. I hope that answers your question. And let me answer the question, how long should your resume be? It depends how many years of experience you have. I have two college graduate daughters who are into their careers two years and seven years, and both of them have two-page resumes. Because resumes are read digitally and keywords are found digitally. So please do not be someone with 20 years experience with a one-page resume. My eyes will bleed trying to read your resume. It's just too small. Okay. So uh, we had another uh, question. Yeah. Uh, as a business owner, should your attractive URL be your name or the name of your company? So we have Kathy Pierce, who was our speaker back in November, and that recording is available. Uh, and she uh, should she have Kathy Pierce coaching or just Kathy Pierce? I would say, well, I mean, it's everyone's decision what's right for them. But the reason that I would say Kathy Pierce is because what if one day Kathy Pierce decides she wants to go work at Microsoft? And she's showing up as Kathy Pierce coaching or consulting, and that's not what she wanted to do. That's why even I have Laura Pepping and not Laura, not Laura Plum Seattle or Laura Plum Coaching, or although I don't go by Laura Pepping Coaching and Consulting. So um, my advice would be get as close to your name as you can, unless you plan on, con on continuing the name of your company and never working anywhere else. So there you go. Okay, recommendations. Um, please, if you want a recommendation on your LinkedIn profile, which is a really nice icing on the cake, it's not a must have. As a recruiter, I really only looked at the recommendations occasionally because um, recommendations are like references. You typically don't have someone write a mediocre reference or a mediocre recommendation. So I weigh it, uh, uh, its value, but it's a little bit more eye glue. So first of all, I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna ask someone to write a recommendation on your LinkedIn profile, please send them an email request. Do not use the tool on LinkedIn. It's too impersonal to use that tool. And I'm not even gonna show you where it is. I, and when you make that request, include a link to your profile so that they know what your LinkedIn profile looks like right now, which after this workshop will be amazing. And then outline what you're trying to highlight and why. So if they say, oh, Kathy, you were the best horse trainer I ever had, you're, you're going to go, no, that's not what I want you to say. I want you to talk about my years of leading, helping lead women IT pros and Instead, you want to give them some guidance on what you're hoping that they'll highlight. And then I'll always offer tit for tat, offer to write one in response. And continue to update those recommendations because I see recommendations from like 1982. No, I'm kidding. That would be before LinkedIn was around. Okay. The other thing about LinkedIn is that you can share your insights and expertise. If there was ever a time when you have time right now to weigh in, on your area of expertise, it's right now. You can go ahead and create industry-related content, content and post it on your profile page. I do it all the time. Um, I write articles, which are super easy. The UI to write articles is really great. Um, and then I share the article postings all the time, in not just on LinkedIn, but even on, um, even on Facebook, Plum's Facebook page. 
Um, you want you can also respond to posts or feedback with additional content. So if Kathy wrote a post and I went, oh my gosh, amen, Kathy, that was amazing. And by the way, here's another person who knows everything about what you know. And this is really interesting additional content. You want to show up as an expert in your field. Again, you can you can go into the wallpaper. You can just be part of the wallpaper or you can just pop out of that wallpaper and be really um, different than everyone else and just show up as being on the cutting edge of what it is you're interested in. Like when one of the things that I love about one of my coaches is that they are still doing some recruiting. Now we're not a placement firm, but they're doing some recruiting. And so I always say that this code coach is on the cutting knife's edge of what's going on in recruiting because they are still doing recruiting. You want to be on that cutting edge. You want people to see you as an expert in this area because people do notice who those experts are. And by the way, hint, if you find someone who's writing you really like, who's already an expert, see who's following them. And then you might want to reach out. So there you go. Okay. I've got a so, question, Laura. Yeah. What happens if we have two to three jobs we're interested in with vastly different job keywords, things recruiters are looking for? For example, a data science role and a program manager role. Well, that's not as well. I get the difference because I used to recruit for both. Um, but um, unfortunately, with LinkedIn, it doesn't allow you to have multiple profiles. It just it just doesn't. Um, so you kind of have to draw a line in the sand. But also, it's not because you're not saying I want to be a data scientist and a veterinarian, which are two totally different industries and totally different things. There is probably going to be some overlap that you can optimize in terms of the keywords of your search. Um, so that's where I would start. But that is a very common question that I get very often about what if there are two things I want to explore. Look at job descriptions for both of those things. See where there's overlap. Tell stories of success that apply to both. And just do your best with what space you have. We call that real estate on your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so we're almost close to making those edits to your profile. But before we do, we have to have you put yourself into a couple of different modes. And the first thing I want to tell you is a lot of people, you'd be amazed at how many people don't know what that little face on LinkedIn is up in the upper right hand corner. Well, there's me. And then when I start on me, it takes me to this drop down and it gives me the options of settings and privacy. And again, that all these slides will be made available to you. So if you're like struggling and you're like, I'm not even on LinkedIn right now. How can I remember this? Don't worry. I gotcha. We got this content here really visible for you. Go to settings and privacy and under settings and privacy, this is your dashboard. I play in my dashboard all day long. This is where you edit your public profile and do your URL. See the custom URL. So you're here. Edit your public profile where it says change. Click on that and then edit your custom URL and that's where you change it. So that's one thing that I wanted to show you. The other thing is under privacy is profile viewing options. This is halfway down the page. Now on this slide, it looks like it's at the top of the page so I can show it to you. It's halfway down the privacy page. How others see your LinkedIn activity. And these are really misnamed sections. Profile viewing options is where you are going to put yourself under the Harry Potter cloak of invisibility as you look at other people and determine whether they're decision makers on jobs or if they're recruiters. You don't want them to know you're looking at you. I'll show you that in a minute. And then share job changes, education changes, and work anniversaries from profile. Now, again, it's misnamed. Basically, what this section is, is alert the masses whenever I make a change, even a period, even a comma, to my profile. It is so annoying when you're on LinkedIn and you see, sorry, I'm going to pick on you, Kathy. It's not really you. Kathy updated her LinkedIn profile. Two minutes later, Kathy updated her LinkedIn profile. Three minutes later, 
This is the section that gets you out of that situation. Oops. And so you want to click on that section and you want to put it so that it is set to no. It is set to no. There's another place to do that, but I'm just showing you your dashboard because I believe in the power of the dashboard. And then also that profile viewing options. You have three profile viewing options. Fully visible at the top. Sorry, I delete, accidentally deleted this slide. Um, fully visible at the top. One in the middle that I'm not going to even talk about because it's useless. And one on the bottom that says totally anonymous. And you've looked at people who have looked at you, right? And you know that if they're anonymous, you can't see them. And it says a LinkedIn member. This is where you do that. Now I toggle out of this section all the time because I'll go look at Kathy under Harry Potter Cloak of Invisibility. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know why I'm looking at her. And maybe I looked at her and I was a recruiter and I didn't want her to know I was looking at her because maybe she doesn't really align to what it is that I need her to do. But she'd be all excited if she saw that I was looking at her. So I'm under that cloak. But let's say she's exactly who I wanted to recruit. Then I'm going to change my mode away from private and into fully visible and then reach out to her. And then we get the conversation going. So I toggle, like I said, I toggle back and forth on this one all the time. But this one right here is always at no, unless one reason you change your photo because everybody loves photos. So if you get um, a professional photo taken or a really great photo taken and you're going to change your LinkedIn picture, what you do is you set this back to yes, you update the picture, you go back in your dashboard, set it back to no, because you'll forget if you don't. And then you're going to get a ton of people going great picture, great picture, great picture, because people love pictures. Okay, should I buy LinkedIn Premium? Kathy, do we have any questions before I go on to this? Uh, no, just some people comment. It looks like the privacy page may have been updated, like probably even since you started. So yeah, yeah. Since actually, I did this workshop last week, and so even since then. So yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. Yep. Thank like you, you said. Again. Okay, and actually, that was brilliant because now I really did show you that LinkedIn makes its UI changes anytime it wants. Yep. So should I buy LinkedIn Premium? And that is a little bit of a complex question. And that is, there's lots of good stuff. I'm on LinkedIn, for, I buy a yearly um, membership to LinkedIn Premium. If you are a Microsoft alumni or you work at Microsoft, it's I think like 80% off or some outrageous amount of money off. So it's definitely worth it. Why not? I mean, it's so inexpensive. If you are not an alum of Microsoft or have an affiliation to Microsoft, then it's about $30 a month, I think. Um, I haven't checked the prices lately. Um, it's worth it to me in job search because you get better job search, you get better results, you can look at who's viewed your profile. There's all these charts and graphs that show you when people looked at you and what their background was. Like, were, were they recruiters? Were they people in tech? Were they people who made peanut butter? Were, who are those people? All that data is shared with you. Um, there, it'll also share with keywords that drove people to your profile. So if you keep getting people driven to your profile because you have the word um, project, but you don't want to be a project manager. You want to be a data science person or data analytics person. It should be that people are driven to your profile because of the word data, which means you don't have that word in or data. You don't have that in there enough. So it helps inform changes to your profile. You can see all the way up to third degree connections. Um, of course, you can reach out to anyone on LinkedIn. You don't even need to be connected to them anymore. Um, you can do saved search alerts for job searches and your first month is free. And then they try and convert you. Um, I always tell people if you're going to do LinkedIn premium, even if it's like 20 cents, update your profile first. Don't get the clock ticking the day you buy it and then start updating your profile because you're going to be playing around with your profile. Remember I told you go job shopping, get content, get data, information about the jobs that you want, and then you're going to 
want to put success stories together and single bullets, and then you're going to want to do your about all these things you're going to want to do. So do that first and then do your LinkedIn premium. Okay. So I'm going to do a very quick summary because we don't have a lot of time. So your profile is going to validate your expertise. It is your, in essence, it's your personal web, your personal website. We don't all have personal websites. I do encourage you to go to the Plum website, which is plumseattle.com. And that is kind of expressing the professional side of my world. But for most of us who don't have companies, this is our website. It's a marketing tool for you. It is the way that you are found. Um, I believe in what's called passive search. It's one of the five job search methodologies that we embrace at Plum. That's where your LinkedIn profile is so good that all you do is sit there, drink your coffee, and wait for people to find you. And they will, because if you have all new content on your LinkedIn profile, you're considered fresh meat. Fresh content begets lots of hits. It's really important. Um, you want to consider premium and your profile should include all these elements. That customized URL should be easy, include the keywords, successes, those numerals, symbols, and names, which people don't even think about that when they're usually doing their profile. So who believes in the power of LinkedIn besides Laura Pepping? Take it from me. I know what I'm talking about, but if you don't, Microsoft believes in LinkedIn and they spent $26.2 billion with a B in 2016 to buy LinkedIn. That is how much they believe in the power of it and isn't just for the things we talked about today, um, but for all sorts of different reasons. So um, I'm just going to leave it there. I've given us like about three minutes for questions, but um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And again, if you decide you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, please make sure that you put a note on LinkedIn, your LinkedIn request, or else I will not accept your invitation because I need to know who you are. Um, you're validating my, um, my reason for connecting with you when you include that note. And with that, I will turn it back over to Kathy. And stop thank there. you so much. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, do you help people find jobs even if they don't live in Seattle? Um, yes, um, actually, I we have worked. First of all, I want to be really clear. Plum coaches you on a, how to execute your job search. We're not a placement firm, but we have worked with people um, in Abu Dhabi, in France, in Germany, in uh, the Netherlands, in New York, and even in Tacoma. <laughs> So everywhere, we work with people everywhere. Great, fantastic. And uh, uh, Lydia, I don't know if you, if you heard the first part, but they also had someone at Plum who works with people who are uh, right out of school. And you said that you were uh, on LinkedIn, you told me that you were studying IT. So yeah, they, they have people who can help with that one. Yes, we have one coach, Deanna, and she is amazing. She is absolutely amazing. And she knows as much about LinkedIn as I do and as do all our coaches. And Tammy was saying, someone forwarded me this invite. What was the group that hosts this so I can join? Uh, I'll put it in the chat window again, but uh, we hashtag everything on both LinkedIn and Twitter with hashtag women IT pros, all one word. So if you uh, use something like TweetDeck so you can follow that easily or you know search on that. Um, I also post them to our Women IT Pros group on LinkedIn, and I post them out to the tech community. So, um, you know, that, that's those are the best ways to find it. You, you can follow me. I'm at CXP Kathy. And uh, uh, Kathleen, yeah, we have uh, some internal recordings on stream, but I put them out on um, the tech community so that everybody can see them, because this is not just Microsoft people. This, this call is open to the world. And um, uh, Laura, maybe you could put your contact information in the chat window because there are a couple people who are interested in finding you. Okay, uh, Laura. I can use that chat now. Yeah. Uh, Nia says, is there a difference between the kind of info that goes into the resume versus LinkedIn? You talked a little bit about that, but maybe just kind of, you know. Sure, I'll just revisit that for a second. So your LinkedIn profile really needs to be targeted toward an audience that is looking for you or assessing you 
um, holistically against their job needs. Your resume is a tool in your search. It's not your search. It validates for specific jobs. Like you hear about people uh, changing their, their uh, or tweaking their resume all the time for applying to certain jobs. And um, that tweaking can happen because you're, you know, applying for one job and then job B and then job C and then job D. And that's the beauty of a resume. You can tweak it on LinkedIn. You can't tweak it. So you have to really be very focused on making sure that whatever content you're putting on LinkedIn is really in service to the job that you want or the jobs you want sort of holistically. And I put the link to Plum, it's Plum Seattle's just like the fruit, plumseattle.com. And um, also, like I said, we have a Facebook page that is under Plum Job Search Strategies. I can't put the link here, but I'll put um, Plum Job Search Strategies on Facebook. That is what it would be under, and we're giving away lots of free content. We want to give this away. We believe in giving back. Also, by the way, we're going to be um, supporting our public radio station, uh, KUOW. You'll hear a lot of um, sponsorship messages next week on KUOW and the week after for Plum. Um, during this time, we want to balance supporting a business, um, a woman-owned, founded business, and a great group of coaches and consultants. Um, we want to support them and keep them working, but we also want to support you, which is why we're putting out as much free content as we can. Awesome. Uh, so we have about two minutes. If anybody wants to type real quick, or uh, if you want to come off mute and just ask something, we may be able to take one question. And Maria, thank yep. you very much. I, I had posted a question earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of sharing your public profile, I know that, you know, with, with LinkedIn and then you give access to recruiters, they can see your profile. What, are, what is your recommendation in terms of sharing, I guess, your professional data publicly? You know, I've had clients, um, there's another section of this because it was so short. Like I said, this is a three hour workshop condensed into one hour. Um, there's one section of your LinkedIn profile um, under in your dashboard underneath where you change your public URL. Mm -hmm. There's all these options where you can check boxes of things you wanna make public. Your LinkedIn profile, you can hide it completely. If you don't want to be found, um, you don't want recruiters to find you, you just, you're just you just not in that space right now, you can actually click a box that says, do not make this public. So it's not publicly accessible. But you can also, if you want to be public, but you don't want every single thing on your profile public, you can actually choose and click. There's like 20 boxes of all the different things you can click. Now, when we work with our clients, we want to optimize their search. So we're going to have them click as many boxes as they possibly can. And they're totally comfortable doing that. But um, we have them click all of them because the more you click, the more you're found. But as far as... It, Vera, did I answer your question? Is that ideally what you're trying to get at? I, I don't want to misinterpret your question. Yeah, thanks for asking. I think my interest was around, you know, because LinkedIn provides the feature for recruiters to be able to see your profile, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So there's there's that way. So what what difference does it make? And I'm trying to understand, you know, yeah. if you've already what provided that. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the value of that, clean and simple. Um, so recruiters use a LinkedIn dashboard, and that dashboard is a search tool that they pay a gob of money for, and a licensing fee is really expensive. And whenever you click, I'm open to recruiters reaching out to me for these kinds of positions because it gives you a whole bunch of filters. Um, it basically says to the recruiters out there who are looking for people with your background, this person is interested in being approached. Mm -hmm. Remember how I said the words passive search? You don't even have to click on that if you want, don't want to. You don't even have to tell recruiters you're open if you don't want to, although it's an added value. 
what you can do is just have a really amazing profile and then recruiters will find you. Like if I, if you did not click that button and I as a recruiter was looking at your profile and I went, she didn't click that she was open, but she has so much amazing experience. I don't even care if she's interested. I think I can do the dance of the seven veils and get her to sign on. I, I will just reach out to you anyway. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank you. We need to wrap up, but if you uh, if you want to hang out and do some networking, or if you have some other questions that you may want to ask that you didn't want uh, as as part of the general thing, then uh, we, we'll hang out for a couple extra minutes here. But thank you, Laura, so much. Wonderful information. Um, and our, our May call will be uh, May twenty second, and it is um, how to get noticed by recruiters. So, you know, some more job you search. Kind of know. Call. And then uh, <laughs> our June call is going to be about allyship. So really looking forward to that. So hope you can all join us. I put in the chat window where to find us or you follow me at CXP Kathy on Twitter and LinkedIn or look for hashtag women IT pros.